Good evening, ladies and gents. I'm second again. Check to make sure the microphone is set correctly. And it is. So what's going on, everybody? Another eventful week. Uh, on tonight to give you more of an in-depth uh, look into what happened today at the Hall of Fame with today's um, Ag and Bre New York State Breeders Development Fund uh, meeting, which included the Commissioner of Gaming and the outgoing and incoming Director of New York Ag. All I can say is, first of all, I am thankful I was there. What I saw was both a, um, let's, it was comical, a demonstration of arrogance, ignorance, and entitlement by certain individuals. And what I mean by that is, I saw firsthand, in action, the people that I call the people that control this business, basically demanding and standing on what they're demanding, what they want from the state of New York, in defiance of what the governor has responded to them with and what she's asking for in return before she offers what these people are demanding and stood pat on that. So let's start with, let's go over the whole, time, the, the whole ordeal. First of all, this morning when I called, when I went, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have any issues. Turns out somebody did make a complaint and tried to sell the idea that the Hall of Fame is part of Goshen Historic Track. Long story short, I got a return call from the Goshen Village Police Department that says, otherwise, oh my, Mr. Petrelli, you're all set, no problem, blah, blah, blah. So, strike two, or strike one, right there. Because I did RSVP yesterday, or the day before yesterday, it's in New York Gaming, and uh, made them aware that I would be attending. And out of respect, I did everything the right way. They did have an officer there, you know, uh, a security. Uh, for their meeting because you do have state officials there totally understood I walked in first person I walked into was Mike Kimmelman gentleman who I'd had words with a couple of times but someone like I said I think is on our side of the fence we shook hands said what's going on I said I'm just here to uh, you know see how this thing works and he says so uh, what you guys do is what I said and he says me too and that was it parted ways I stayed very distant did not interact with anybody sat down and when I sat down I didn't realize that where I was sitting was behind the uh, the dais let's call it um, where I was looking directly I guess at the uh, webcam which is what was supposed to hey Rick what's up um, I guess they were sporadic the live stream I'm sure that they're gonna have to they'll eventually post the replay of it but I didn't know that I put positioned myself perfectly by accident so I sat down to my left was Mike Kimmelman. To my immediate right was Ray Schnitker. Um, right directly in front of me was Steve Jones, the uh, one of the trustees of the uh, Ag and Breeze Development Fund, and the only one that, which, I, like I said, and I'll openly tell everybody, we sent in the letter uh, expressing a conflict of interest on many levels to Letitia James, the Attorney General, who has been looking into it, but now there's other things going on there. But I'm glad he's still there because I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, to his left was the commissioner, to the left of him was the, uh, the outgoing director, oh no, I'm sorry, incoming director, yes, okay, and um, the outgoing director was off at another table. So they started their uh, meeting, oh, and also was Mark Ford, who was about 15 feet away from me, to, on the other wall snapping pictures of me like I gave a shit because he was let's say it this way they were chuckling when I first came in they weren't chuckling when we left so what happened what was the reason for this first of all they were announcing that new director uh, Ralph Scusiano would be taking over as director from um, uh, Ron Oakram uh, on December 15th oh no is that the chair? yeah I believe so who is acting in interim I didn't know that as the interim director of the Ag Fund. The big news is I got to learn some things about how this works. I found out that, let's start with the Breeders Awards. 
and why this makes why this um, is an issue is they're crying that they that they're having issues with breeding in New York State that it's it's shrinking and evaporating I don't know if I should tell it this way or the other way but I'll say first of all two year last year breeders awards were five hundred thousand dollars that was the let the, the uh, set level this year it was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars next year it'll be one million dollars now voting on this is Steve Jones, owner of Cameo Hills Farms, president of the board of directors of Goshen Historic Track, sits on the uh, board of the Hamiltonian Society, um, has an interest in breeding, obviously, in this in this state, um, through his breeding farm, owns mares, drops foals, pet, owns stallions, breeds breeds standard breeds. Now, according to their their own rules and bylaws, that that would constitute conflict of interest but that's not what we're talking about here he was he votes on the allotment of this money which he benefits from so now they got him now next year they're gonna have a million dollar uh, breeders award uh, purse uh, total let's say so next up they were talking about what they're doing by chopping off the bottom they re, they reiterated Commissioner on how, how it was a uh, it worked to the to the best advantage that they chopped off Excelsior B to save money. They took that money and put it on the top, which they will do next year by adding it to the finals on Day of Champions, Night of Champions. So instead of two hundred thousand, it'll be back to two twenty five. So what they're what they're saying right there is they are admitting, in my eyes, that. By cutting off the lower end for people that may not have the top tier uh, Colts and Phillies, two and three year olds, you you either have to just drop out of sire stakes or race and county fairs that they have increased by 5,000 thanks to Peter Aragena, the only guy that seems to be fighting for the little guy, who is working. Um, temporarily to help bridge the gap that they have nobody in the office working and uh, for seven months he worked for them for a whopping and they, they announced this today seventy five hundred dollars this man basically covering his costs five hundred dollars a month he's basically carrying the New York Ag and uh, British Development Fund office and working for the little guys so they took away money from the bottom and threw it back up to the top now, here's where it gets interesting. I had heard a few weeks ago that Governor Hochul vetoed a bill that was set, um, to the, sent to the State Assembly. And I'll just say it quickly in paragraph 3-A. Three, three this is how the bill read, or you could surmise it. Subsequent to the year 2022, a foal shall be eligible for the New York State, for the New York Sire Stakes, if sired by a, sal a stallion, owned by a resident of this state or leased to a resident of this state for a period of no less than one year and standing for service within the state at the time of the fall's conception. It also goes on up top to uh, basically what it's saying again is they wanted to fill the gap out of state stallions if owned by uh, owners of New York State would make the babies New York State New York Sire Stakes eligible. Governor Hochul vetoed it, sent it down, set it back down with um, the preface that what she wants is, and this was awesome to hear, she wants to understand why the state has to again cover the losses of an of an industry that's shrinking. Um, they stated, I believe it's two hundred. There were two hundred foals less dropped in New York State from last year to this year. Don't quote me on that. Si uh, sires are leaving the state. Mayors are leaving the state. And in the words of the commissioner, and you can all watch this if they ever put up the uh, the video replay. A live stream replay that there are there are no new owners coming into the business well duh and it was wonderful to hear that from this man 
everything that we've been talking about. They want the state to make up the difference for them in one way or another. That would also entitle these guys to Breeders' Awards for stallions that aren't even here. More money that comes from the state. And we all know who would benefit from that. The top guys and the guys that are voting on these uh, on the, uh, the finances in these Breeders' Awards and Sire Stakes that have valid interests in both. So, first the commissioner said, here's the problems. We don't know what to do. That Co Governor Hochul wants them to put together a, uh, a uh, let's say, n not so much an investigation, to, but to bring in parties who would look into their finances, look into their business, uh, the way they run their organization, business, maybe to have outside consultants come in, go through everything, come up with a, with a, uh, with some ideas on how to build a new business model to make this viable, profitable, bringing new interest into breeding standard breads in New York State rather than just keep putting money into something that's shrinking, 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 kind of sounds like the business, doesn't it? With the VLTs and the subsidies on the uh, purses. Um, and she wants to have a projected business model out for the next 10 years. This is in the words of the commissioner. She's basically telling them, no more free money, guys. Unless you can show that you can, on paper, with an unbiased outside consultant that it's even possible before I even look into it again. And she would view it again after the first of the year. So after that was said, that's when my eyes just opened and I went ding, 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 ding. The letters are getting to Governor Hochul. All the people that we've been working with, or I've been working with, have been getting in uh, Governor Hochul's ears. And it's working. It's not going to be freebies anymore. They're not going to be slam dunks that they were used to. You could actually feel the air get sucked out of the room when this was said. I looked around and all of a sudden those people that were laughing weren't laughing anymore. So he looks to the left of the commissioner, looks to the left of him to the new guy coming in and says, what do you think? And he says, well, here's the problem. Um, stallions, we're up against competition now. People are going elsewhere for the money. He says, and, they, and then he asked him, what's our biggest competition? And he answered, Ontario, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Then from next, next to me, Mike Kimmelman spoke up, and rightfully so, and said, not only that, Ohio, Indiana, and obviously, I think somebody said, Kentucky. The people are going, that the, the business is dying here. The money's getting less and less. The more it gets less and less, the more people that leave and don't buy into New York State and the more people that leave, the money gets less and less. Like that's what I call this, we're watching the accelerated death of harness racing in New York State. Not to mention we have a governor now who's a player and realizes that they're not going to keep supporting a dying industry that's corrupt, abuses horses, and kills horses. So, he offers his, his uh, opinion and that Maybe we should go into marketing, promoting. Uh, they also spoke about the grants that were uh, handed down, 4-H, they're doing something with them this year. All good stuff, but it's already too late. Trying to spur interest in uh, New York State agriculture with standard breads, um, with the younger crowd. It's just, I'm sorry, you know, we'll, we'll let that go. But they're, they're trying to show, it's kind of like after the fact when Nick Surick said that he's... Uh, open a landscaping business and he donates to the food pantry. It's just too late, nobody's buying it. Um, so then they look to Steve Jones. Mr. Jones, what do you have to say? Um, do you have anything to add or any ideas? And his answer was, and this is what blew me away and what I call the arrogance, all right? Well, the breeders have made it clear what, 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 what they want. We, I don't see any reason for any changes. That was his response. He made it clear, and they made it clear, what they want. And he sees no reason for anyone else to come in and try to figure out what's wrong. 
That's in straight defiance of what the governor is asking for. The entitlement and the arrogance that it's just going to remain status quo, business as usual, here's your money, do whatever you want. Um, if you live in Antarctica or, the, or, your, or your stallion is in friggin' Brazil, um, you know, as long as you own him here and he has a baby and you bring it back or it drops over here, then, it, then you're going to get your breeders' awards. That's how arrogant these people are. Mind-blowing. So now, things that I noticed. If the issue is stallions being moved out of New York State, mares leaving New York State, people not buying standard breads to breed in New York State, you have a man sitting there on the board as a trustee who owns Cameo Hills Farms, right? Um, bred a horse named King of the North, the man sitting next to me who trained King of the North, right? King of the North was just retired and now will be now be standing at stud in Ontario, Canada. <laughs> Blows my mind. They're not doing anything to alleviate the real problem. They are worried about their bottom line and making sure that that stallion goes somewhere where he's going to make money. Period. They're not worried about New York. Then you got, sitting along the wall, under the picture of Billy Houghton, is Mark Ford, who's there, I would imagine, in representation and in attendance for New York State. You would think, right? Owns a training center. I don't know what his situation is with mayors or anything like that at his farm. But he's sitting there, and here they are saying that one of the biggest competitors in the uh, agricultural end of the, the market is New Jersey. Mark Ford lives and resides in Campbell Hall, New York. His business is based in Wall Hill slash Middletown, New York. Yet he represents the horsemen of New Jersey in the SBOANJ. Um, is constantly meeting and representing the horsemen there in Trenton with their politicians. And allegedly, I believe, and this is what I was told, to keep his residence down there, he has an apartment down there. Whether it's an apartment, townhouse, condo, wouldn't that be a conflict of interest as well? How can you be doing double duty as a USTA director in District 8, which is here in New York, and basically <laughs> with the enemy while New York State uh, harness racing and, and the standard bread industry is shrinking here is in New Jersey representing the New Jersey um, standard bread breeding industry and, ra and harness racing industry. I just don't understand. But there we go again with the Bermuda Triangle of harness racing, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Everybody trying to make all the money they can Yet, they want the gaps filled by the states and somebody else with somebody else's money. So, angrily, I looked around and I was like, just keep your mouth shut. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. All they're doing, they are doing exactly what I've been saying. Sitting there with their hands out. And for the first time, we saw a governor say no to these people. And I loved it. And after they adjourned this meeting, there were no smiles. Um, I was writing my notes. Um, I looked over, saw Schnitger. No smile there. The other guy didn't even make a, didn't even turn his head toward me. Um, Jones and the commission and the uh, the board there, they just stood up, shook hands, and I looked over and I saw Mike Kilmerman and I snuck over to him, and I said, and we started to chat. And the only two, uh, let, we'll say, chuckling in the room, and this was because we were small talking and being ourselves again. And I said to Mike, I said, Mike, I want you to do me, please do me a favor. Don't take anything I ever said personally. You know I love these horses. And he says, no. He says, it's in you. It's burned in you is what he said to me. I said, yes. I said, I'm not here to try to destroy harness racing. I said, but see what just happened here? I said, I don't know if you've been watching what I'm doing, but... 
This is a perfect example of what I've been saying. And I told him about the people I'm working with, and I said, I don't understand why nobody else is reaching across to explain to these people that there are good people being affected. And yes, here's proof, the, the business is truly dead without the assistance of the states. Why hasn't the USTA or anybody been, been acknowledging this? And he says, you know, like I do, we, everyone knows it's, but they're just ignoring it. And we were chuckling. Um, what else did I say? Oh, and I said, please tell my enemies. And I said, I first said, please tell your friends, or I mean, my enemies here, that I am not the devil. I'm the devil's advocate. And maybe had they treated me a little better, I could offer them information that might help them in their problems. By showing them facts and reality that you're not gonna duck these things. You're not gonna, you're not gonna sit there like a Steve Jones and say, well, we made it clear what we want. <laughs> That's not gonna fly. What do you think you're gonna influence the governor into flipping? What are you gonna do? You're gonna, you're gonna do like you did with me? Throw me out? Muscle me? Like they do to everybody? Threaten them with, you know, we can we can make life miserable for you? Like happened to me earlier this week that blew, that's not gonna work for someone else, another racing official. But I'm giving them the time to see if they actually do the right thing. So far I've heard nothing but buying time and bullshit. But that's another matter. But I can explain to them, this is how these people, they, they think and what they want to do. And these other pe these people, I'm just going to say it like this, want harness racing gone. And I don't even think I'm going to be able to explain to them that there's any possible way that this business can be viable, profitable, sustainable, on its own, and um, ne uh, no corruption, governable, honorable, any of it. It's just not going to happen. If anything, we see it getting worse. And that's the problem. And it really came clear today watching that meeting. And that's one meeting I've, I've ever been to. And I just, it uh, reinforced everything that I've been saying. So you could take that again and make, come to your own assumptions, your own conclusions. But there's a bill on the floor right now that they also acknowledged that um, is there for the uh, state assembly to, to see and if it gets handed up to Governor Hochul and it's to flip the VLT law. So we're starting to see the hints that harness racing is no longer, be, no longer going to be funded by the state of New York. It has done nothing to try to change the um, the perception, even, much less clean it up. It's made no effort to it. And I think what I saw for the first time also was, by listening to the two gentlemen who represented New York Gaming and the New York Ag on the Albany, the state level, they're genuine. You could hear it in their voice that they they actually cared. And they're like, well, what do we, you could hear the way they said it. Well, well what do we got to do? I mean, um... They were like dumbfounded and looking for answers. So they looked to the one horseman, you want to call him that, who's a trustee. Well, what should we do? And he goes, well, we made it clear what we want. Are you fucking kidding me? That's why harness racing is going to die. That attitude right there. And those guys, even though they're taking the money first, they're going to be the first ones to really be hurt. And in the end... If it gets chopped down on the big level like it looks like could, it could be, and it's heading down that road, it's going to be the little guys that survive. I'm, I'm starting to see it. You're going to see harness racing get beat down and then built back up. And they're going to eliminate all of the slime. And that's the only way that you're going to see it last into the future. Just my opinion. But from witnessing what I saw today, that's, that's what I took away from this. Steve Woodall said, when, in Illinois, when the Illinois was at its peak, we had a million dollar bonus program, when three out of four designated races qualified for a share of the million dollar bonus, when that program ended, everything went downhill from, from there. Without casino money, 
it was the only incentive we had to buy Illinois brands, and that's true. All the money, Steve, look at it this way, Illinois breeding program. Um, I call it fake money. It's like monopoly money now that keeps these guys going. And again, it's the same people that own all the, all the big breeding farms. It's the same people that train for the big owners. It's the same people that deal with the big breeding farms. That's why the little guys can't buy a horse at a sale anymore like we used to. Um, you know, nowhere near the amount that you used to be. Now, now you got foals being dropped less and less, like anything else, the less there is and the demand is the same, the value goes up. Or the, uh, the relative value. Who can afford that? The same people. So they want more money from the state to make up the difference, which they're guaranteed to earn because they own all the babies. It's just a cycle of bullshit. It's like a fucking pyramid scheme. Inside of trading, whatever you want to call it. The same people controlling the, the top money. Top 5% earning 95% of the money. The bottom 95% earning 5% of the money. It's like a mirror image is what, what's happening in this country right now, too. However, I think the state is on to it. I think New Jersey is next. Pennsylvania, there's been a lot of rumbling going out there, too. Anyone who's accused me of wanting, like a, a gentleman a couple of weeks ago, VLTs, the money to be taken away, it's going to hurt good people. Well, maybe it's time to step up, good people, and start talking. I get a lot of people sending me, again, information and then say, you can't use my name. Well, that does me no good. I'm not going to get sued for anybody. Even though I believe you 100% what you tell me, I can't do that. And that's why these guys continue to get away with what they continue to get away with. But I think, hopefully, the legal routes that have been taken by myself, the gentleman I've been working with, um, Night Class, PETA, I know, don't, don't fucking kill the messenger, but they're doing it. They may want it shut down, but they're getting noticed in Albany, and they have no, Albany has no other um, option but to respond to them because, again, they'll expose them if they don't. And they have the power to change a vote. This isn't even going to go to a vote. Governor Hochul, I think, is um, responding correctly. We're not going to, con and it's only on the centerbred side, too. And another thing I need to note, thoroughbreds are fine because they've done the right thing. Standardbreds just keep reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. And, and that's it. They're on to everyone. The entitlement is over with and the free money is over with. So we're going to see this quickly over the next few months because money and everything, and money has to be guaranteed. Uh, it is already for next year's uh, sire stakes. And they've got their million dollars now in Breeders' Awards. But when you see, which from what I'm learning from the inside, that 2023 could be the last year of VLT subsidies in New York State. So I just want to go on record as saying that. And when that happens, it's all over. Also mentioned at this meeting was Mr. Gorrell in Tioga. This was from the commissioner who said he's run out of patience. Um, the tracks have to pay back through handle, I believe, that goes back into purse structure and breeders' words and whatever back into the ag every month, as per the VLT law also, and breeders uh, and the New York ag agreement. He missed two payments. I don't know what the amount is, but it's, they seemed awful angry about it, and they said he's been blowing them off for a year and a half, and he's not he's not going to take it anymore. Um, Mr. Grell may have his reasons, may not. I don't know. But uh, he said he's got until January 1st that if he does not respond and pay this money that is owed back to the Ag Fund or to the Ag Fund um, from Tioga Downs, that they will take it to the Supreme Court and or hold back purse money. That's what the man said. I don't, just, I don't know why Mr. Grell is not making these payments. And I, I know there was... Um, they had a tough time up there in Tioga this year, but I don't know. He's not going to pay out of his pocket or whatever. Again, I'm not going to try to, uh, I'm not going to speculate on what, what the deal is. But that was said at the end of the uh, meeting before they adjourned, and then that, that's when it ended. So, 
I hate to be the guy that, 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 that says, I warned you, but I warned you. I warned all of you, if you race in New York, if you have any interest in New York racing, um, New York Cyrus Stakes, um, County Fair racing, this is, this is your livelihood. And these people that are controlling it are fucking it up. And it's out of pure greed and, again, arrogance. They want as much money as they can get for themselves, not you. I watched it happen right in front of me today. And when confronted with, okay, how can we work this out with the governor, the one horseman on the board of trustees, the three trustees that they have, his answer was, we made it clear what we want. <laughs> and that was it. I got nothing after that. So tomorrow's live, I'm going to also hold off a few more days. Um, there hasn't been a negative or positive resolution on that yet, so I'm just going to give it until next week again before I make my statement on that one too. The one where it, uh, what the hell did I call it? Let me look. I can't look. But where I, I ran into a little conversation with a racing official this week. So we're going to hold that hold off on that for a little bit. Other than that, enjoy your weekend. Um, supposed to be shitty tomorrow, like I said, with Slim. He's staying with me. Um, any help again would uh, is greatly appreciated. Just to, like I said, three months and then I'm on my own no matter what either way. He's not going anywhere. But I'm going, I was going to throw the saddle on him tomorrow, but we're going to do it Sunday. Got a visitor coming, one of the contributors and a friend of the uh, group here, uh, but isn't coming until Sunday because it's going to be shitty. So we're going to throw the saddle on him Sunday. I will go live so everybody can see it. It may go really well, which I expect. But if anything stupid happens, you can all laugh at me when I'm on my head, if I land on my head. I'll catch you all later. Take it easy.